Oh, you're going to love this. Help me give a big old Springfield size welcome to Stars of Hocus Pocus. We'll begin with Ms. Amanda Shepard. Come on down. I felt like Rob Bobby there. And let's bring up Larry Bagby. Come on up to the stage. And last but certainly not least, an icon in the business. Please help me welcome Doug Jones to the stage. Thank you guys so much for being here. The way this is going to work, this is a Q&A. You guys are the Q's, they are the A's. <laughs> is that the first time you've heard that? <laughs> So what I will do because of our microphone situation, I will come right down here to the front in that little space right there. Uh, you can line up in the middle aisle and we will get through as many questions as we can in the short time that we have together. We will probably not get through every question. That's my fault. I'm the bad guy that has to keep us on track. So uh, any questions you have afterwards or if you want autographs, photos, all that can be taken care of downstairs at their tables. So they'll be here uh, today and then tomorrow as well. Okay, does that work for you guys? Okay. That works for you all? We accept your challenge. All right, let's get after it then. Feel free to line up, guys. I will be down here in the middle. Who wants to be the first up? Because I can do it, but I want to give you guys the opportunity to ask the questions. Come on up. Hello. Tell us your name. Your name is Lily. Lily, you have a question? We're going to ask it in just a minute. Lily, what's your favorite color? Green. Lily, what's your favorite breakfast food? Toast. <laughs> Lily likes it. Green toast. All right, Lily, ask your question. How long does it take you to get your makeup done for Saru? Ah, uh, uh, so makeups are deceivingly short for me, believe it or not. For Saru, for instance, on Star Trek Discovery is what she's referring to. For those checking out. Oh, oh, no, no. The, the pieces that go on to me are made weeks ahead of time. So the sculpting, the painting is, is done ahead of time. When those prosthetic pieces get on to me, that's the last step. And so that takes three hours, I'm sorry, no, they're down to two hours a day for Saru. And the hands and gloves go boop on me. And then of course those funky shoes are the last, and then I, uh, contact lenses go on and on set. So pretty, pretty fast. And, and uh, uh, Billy Butcher's in the is focus. Which are also about two hours because of the same process. A lot of it was done ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you, love. Thanks, Lily. Good question. Hello, step on up. What is your name? Uh, my name is Chris, and um, I actually I was going to give this to you downstairs, but I forgot. Um, would, would, you, would you like this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Let's explain what this is. Yeah, this, uh, it's, a, it's a tiny little Mac tonight with an extra set. You know, I played the Mac tonight character in the Indian ever, and so this. Yeah. And so I got this made this itself, it's not right? Right? Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 it's a beautiful, it's actually a great, great camera right for the character I played back in the day. If I ever pictured myself interviewing <laughs> back in the 80s, I would have to send you a kid. <laughs> thank you, thank you for this. Oh, so and, uh, my question was, uh, today, what is your favorite project personally that you've worked on? Uh, we can all answer that one, probably. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'll start. Uh, I, get, I get emotionally attached to all the uh, projects and characters that I play, so over a 36 year career so far, uh, that's a lot. So it's, it's hard to pick the one. <laughs> But the romantic in me is really satisfied with the shape of water. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, getting to be a monster with a love story and then ending up at the Oscars on the stage and getting best picture. Yeah, that was okay. That was okay. <laughs> How about you, Amanda? Actually, mine was um, a commercial. <laughs> and it was a Calvin Klein commercial. And I had to jump on a trampoline in my underpants. Uh, Calvin Klein underpants? Calvin Klein underpants. As one does. And I thought, how fun I get to jump on a trampoline in my underwear. <laughs> awesome. Also known as date night. <laughs> date night. 
How about you, man? Um, you know, Hocus Pocus has fond memories. I was at that age. Uh, first time I traveled to do a movie and get to go to Salem with my comrade, Tobias, who was just as young and crazy as I was. So, uh, and I was 17, I turned 18 when we were working on the film and I became his guardian, believe it or not, because his mom wanted to sign off. So he didn't have to drive, she didn't have to drive him to set anymore. Uh, so Hocus Pocus, and it also brings back, I mean, just the, the memories that we keep bringing up here. Looking back, and I have footage of, of when we were shooting, and I, and I, it, I reflect in it, really one of the most fun opportunities I, I had to, to that date. Good, good question, thank you. Hi, step on it. What's your name? Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, my question is to all three of you, and you kind of sort of answered it a little bit there, um, but just wondering what your favorite memory from the filming of Hocus Pocus was. Are you ha Sarah Sanderson? My t-shirt says Sanderson. Yeah. Yeah. Sanderson okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure you weren't the real, because we could have a problem here. Uh, uh, favorite memories of, of filming, uh, like I said, I think being in Salem uh, and seeing those fall colors for the first time. I grew up in Southern California where, you know, we don't see the, that kind of fall. Um, and uh, and then being back on, on set, on the Disney set, up in those cages, that was like the best view in the house, <laughs> you know? We got to watch whether these brilliant actresses are doing their thing and we're getting poked by well, I got booked by Sarah Sanderson, and I'll tell you what, changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of messing with Matthew Broderick up a little bit, but uh, that's it. At least still married Matthew Broderick. I believe so. Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Because <laughs> they were, <laughs> they aren't. <laughs> yeah, she, she brought him to the uh, Hocus Pocus 2 premiere in New York just a couple months ago. So yeah, all good. Uh, I think we need Amanda. Favorite, favorite memory from filming Hocus Pocus? I would have to say, this is actually off set, but on the way to set. Um, Kathy and Jamie would pick me up from my trailer, and she wouldn't let me walk. She would just pick me up and carry me everywhere, and I just thought it was the loveliest thing ever. So... You, you were seven at the time, right? Yes, I was. I was seven years old, so she could pick me up and carry me. Yeah. <laughs> And for me, it would be, uh, you know who else is in the movie, right? Bette freaking Midler. Okay. I had been a huge fan of hers for years before this. Uh, her recording career, her stage career, her films. She'd done a string of Disney Touchstone comedies before that. And so I'm like, I get to play her boyfriend? <laughs> so there, my, my first night of work was this far away from her face, uh, and she was yelling at me with no eyebrows and buck teeth, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that was just it. Anything, any kind of banter with her. And uh, later in the movie shoot, when we were filming the um, the, the party scene, the, the costume party scene, where she got up on stage and sang, uh, "I put a spell on you." I was there for that. And uh, and during that scene, we, during, between takes, uh, we had a quick little conversation. And I asked her how her weekend was, and you know, off off topic stuff. And she said, "You're doing really great with Billy Butcherson. He's very funny." I'm like, well, this would be a great time to die. And if a light fell on my head, I'd be out happy. <laughs> Thank you. Good question, Sarah. Come on up. What's your name? Sam. Sam, what's your question? So this is mine for specifically done, kind of. Um, you've done a lot of cosmetic roles. And I was wondering which role kind of took the longest to get ready for? Uh, the longest one was another fish man named Abe Sabian from the Hellboy movies. Uh, and in Hellboy 1, they, didn't, uh, they streamlined the process a little bit for Hellboy 2, but in the first movie, when you saw me with just shorts on, looking kind of hot and half naked, that was a lot of blue fish guy to cover, right? So, uh, lot, 12 prosthetic pieces from head to toe, and airbrushing on shaved skin, it was a process. And that took seven hours a day. Yeah, so you put in like a, a, a full day of work before you go to work, basically, right? Thank you, Levin. You good question. Hey, your makeup's great, by the way. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Uh, I'm Charlie. And as Hocus Pocus is just about a yearly watch for me in a year, uh, 
was there any kind of like funny little accidents on set that were like not like a big one, but there's like a funny little someone tripped over a wire and you know unplugged, you know, like, too long. So I hate to ruin the movie for you all, <laughs> <laughs> but when I was sitting in the chair, you know that one scene that I'm in, or one of the two scenes. Yeah. Um, I'm, I actually had to use the restroom, and I didn't want to say anything because I was too shy and intimidated by all these legendary women, and I started kicking my leg. As a dead girl. As a dead girl. <laughs> As a dead girl. So, go ahead, watch it again. I'm sorry to ruin it for you guys, but that's the truth. <laughs> uh, for me, well, it's come. For me, I think that when, uh, when, I, when I say my goodbyes at the end of the first movie, uh, I, I'm saying goodbye to the kids and I go and I yawn and flop back into my grave. The first take didn't go so well uh, because there was chunks of wood from my, my broken coffin that were laying around the edge. And I went, <laughs> set a piece of wood flying in the air and splinters. One fell into my eye. So I come up back out of the grave going, ah! After I, you know, goodbye. So the nurse had to come and flush my eye out real quick, and uh, we got back. But take two was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, uh, it was kind of a thing that, that happened when uh, we were filming. The witches were doing their thing, and we were waiting to be put up in the cages, and we couldn't wait, but we did. And uh, so I had a video camera on set, like I mentioned, and I, and I didn't know that I would. It wasn't okay to film while they're shooting. Uh, Sorry, I'll stop it. While they're shooting, and um, so I'm filming, and all of a sudden I'm like looking at Beth Miller as Winifred, like pointing into my camera, and I'm just like Tobias describes it that I just like like stumbled, and all of a sudden I'm like shaking, and then Kenny called cut and said, "Wait." What is going on? Because Beth's like, who is this? You know, why are they filming? You know, like, so, and then this, by the way, this is before the days of cell phones. So you couldn't discreetly do this. Yeah, you had, you had a camera. I had a, I had a right? straight up, like, <laughs> right. Canon, like, pretty yeah. obvious. So it's obvious. Like, Beth, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hell here. So that scared me a lot. Um, <laughs> and I have that footage, which at one point we will release. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe this year, the 30th. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that was a little scary and kind of a mishap, uh, but she was nice, kind of. Maybe not as nice as after that. <laughs> Good question, thank you. Hi, come on up. Oh, my name is Tiff, and... Oh, were you gonna add? Sorry. Um, so what's your name? Tiff. Hi, Tiff. <laughs> okay, so this is a question directed for Doug. Shocking, I know. You've played some of the most weird, morally ambiguous characters, like, cursed I've ever seen in my life. Which one do you say you would like relate to most in your heart? Where does your moral ambiguity lie? That's <laughs> what she's asking. First of all, I was young, I needed the money. Uh, <laughs> but uh, honestly, the one you're dressed up as right now, which is a great cosplay, by the way, Billy Butcher's in your hair. Oh, so it's great. Um, uh, I, I connected with Billy's goofiness and, uh, and his, his desire to go back to sleep. I love napping. Uh, yeah, now though, uh, now another one that, that is, I, I have a great fun time playing is the morally ambiguous Baron Athanas from What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a bit off the charts, uh, and uh, so he's, it's fun to play in that arena and then get it out of my system before I go home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, bro. Oh. Take, your, take your stuffed animal with you, Tim. Hi, what's your name? I'm Siobhan, and this is just for any of y'all who want to answer. I was just wondering what your favorite character you've played has been, just like throughout all of your career. Favorite character we played. Yeah, there is for you too. Favorite character you've ever played. One, one of my favorite characters um, was uh, uh, in the movie Walk the Line. I got to play a, a real person who I got to meet and, and got to know before he passed away, it was Marshall Grant. And um, I guess what makes that 
that character, like kind of like full circle, is I met him after we made the movie, and, and then we got to hang out a few times, and he told us stories firsthand about Tony Cash, and Elvis, his buddy who was funny and had a lot of energy, and would you know always play practical jokes. And you're like, dude, he's just been hanging out with Elvis and all these great iconic you know stars. At the time, they didn't know who they were. But I had the opportunity to attend uh, a, an event in, in Arkansas, in Dias, where John, John Cash lived as a child in his home. And uh, they were trying to raise money at the college of Chris Christopherson, George Jones. Marshall Grant shows up, and he hung out. We all hung out in the hotel lobby that night, and we went to bed and never woke up. And not to be bring it down, but I was able to go to the hospital, he had gone into a diabetic coma, and it was the end of his life, but I was able to hold his hand, and, and then uh, as I was flying away back home, uh, I, I just knew he had passed, and, and, he, and he did, but I got to kind of see the whole life, and then also be with him, at, you know, at his, uh, his last time on earth, you know. So that was, that was pretty special, pretty full circle. Tough act to yeah, follow. Tough act, yeah. Hey, Doug, I gotta I got do something here. I've always played a few characters, you know? So, I was generally always casted as being the mean girl. Um, but as far as my favorite, um, it wasn't a show, because it was a show I was on. Um, it was actually a play. And I never did any theater, but I did one, I did one theater debut, and it was called The Real Queen of Hearts Ain't Even Pretty, and I played The Real Queen of Hearts, and um, she's, you know, supposed to be a beauty queen, but I was extremely mean, and I didn't know that I could play mean until I was done playing that role, and I got off stage, and everyone came up to me and said, really mean. <laughs> I was scared of you when I thought, oh, I think I like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's cool. it, uh, uh, again, having, mm, it's tough to pick a favorite character because they're all become like kids to me. They're all my children. And uh, to say, to pick one, when I don't want to like negate the others, but, uh, so I, I love all of them for different reasons. I've invested so much of myself into each character, even the bad guys. I, I have to love them for one reason or another to play them correctly. So uh, I mentioned the amphibian man from The Shape of Water because of the romance, and it was the finest ass I've ever worn. <laughs> it was. I, I would I good. I, would, uh, uh, I also love the heroic stoicism of uh, the Silver Surfer when I got to play him in the Fantastic Four sequel. Um, I love uh, the intellect of Abe Sapien and his, his calming effect on the VPRD team. I love the goofiness of, of, of uh, Billy Butcher's and Focus Focus. I love the sheer, just like, in-your-face comedy of what we do in the shadows and the Baron Appenas. Star Trek Discovery, of course, Saru is the character I've gotten to know the best because I've played him for the longest now. We've just finished season five. So Saru has been on a journey with me and I've learned some things from him. He, uh, his, his species, the Kelpians, are based in fear. They're born into a fearful situation. They're, they're prey on their, on their home planet. So he lives with fear all his life. And then, uh, so, but he overcame that, and he found a way to join Starfleet and, and, uh, and satisfy his sense of duty by getting over his fear. Which is a lot, there's a life lesson in there for me personally because I have anxiety, and then, like right now is like I'm terrified, by the way. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, and then at one point in Saru's journey, uh, he goes through a, a physical metamorphosis where his threat ganglia fall out, and he becomes, goes through this period called Vaharai, where he, it's like his adolescence, and he now becomes a full-fledged adult Kelpian with no fear. So that was a complete change of character for me. Like I, I based everything about him in this under, undercurrent of fear. That's gone now. So I'm like, another life lesson for Doug Jones. Wait a second. Our circumstances are still going to be what they are. How we respond to them makes all the difference. So I've learned a lot from Saru, so that, you know, they're all favorites for different reasons. Thank you.
Good question. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. What's your question? Uh, my question is about Shadows, so from Doug Jones. I wanted to know more about what it was like getting to do all the crazy stuff the Baron does, especially driving in that little pink car. Um, How much fun was that? Goodness. Well, for those who go, yeah, the Baron goes through lots of changes throughout the series of what we do in the Shadows. And I'm a recurring guest. I'm in a couple episodes every season. Uh, you thought I was dead. I got burned by the sun. They buried me in the backyard. I wasn't all the way dead. So my body broke in half in the process. Two seasons later, they dig me up out of the backyard. Now I'm a charred half body with no legs. So, so, that, so to get around in that episode, they put me on the back of a dog called the Hellhound. And so I rode him like a pony. And I also was in, in like a Barbie car in a, like a Home Depot type of a store driving around with one, one, my one good arm. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it was uh, hilarious fun for me. I had to learn how to actually drive that thing with my feet. It was a long process, but, uh, but no, the Baron has been so, so fun. And what I love about what we do in the shadows too, because it's such a funny um, off-the-cuff show, it's much like The Office with vampires, right? So that handheld reality style filming where they're catching real life happening with these vampires, you know, real life. Uh, but we, we, do, we do a few takes as scripted, and the scripts are brilliantly hilarious. Then they give us a couple takes they call the fun run, where we get to go as far off script as we want to. And that's where a lot of comedic gems come out, because these, the cast is, they're all hilariously funny people. So and they, now that they know that that's coming, they'll, they'll pre-plan their bits they want to do during the fun run. And it's like utter lunacy on set. Thank you. Good question. Hey, bud, what's your name? Uh, Weston. Um, this is um, dedicated to Doug. Um, how was your experience playing um, Abe in Hellboy? Uh, it was so artistically and creatively satisfying and physically so much. <laughs> I, was, I was, you know, with my own little slice of hell, boy. Um, it was. Uh, again, the makeup process was long enough, right? And then to perform in it all today, and I, I couldn't see very well. Uh, Abe Sabian's eyes are out here. And they're these big, beautiful blue eye, uh, you know, iridescent eye, shit, fish eyes. I was looking through his tear duct, this tiny little, little triangle. Here, here. This is all I can see all day long, right? So I had no peripheral vision. So that means that walking around, it's like I had to do this to the room to find out, okay, this is where this, everything is, and now, okay, okay, there, okay, good, got it, got it. So I had to map all that out before we filmed the scene. And my, uh, can I tell a story real quick? Yes. Uh, uh, Hellboy 1, the first movie, we're walking down a really long corridor, and then we make a left turn to walk down another long corridor. We had to stop at one point and look up at uh, the staircase, and Professor Broom was on the staircase, and Hellboy says, Father. Okay, so this whole long walk and talk with the, the BPRD agents, they're briefing us on the thing. We're walking. It was obviously it was like from the other side of the end here. So I had to, I couldn't see anything, so I had Ron Perlman here next to me, Hellboy, and I could kind of figure out where his shoulder was. If, we, if I started like this, like, okay, if he's there, we're going the right direction. So we go, right? Uh, so take one, uh, we're going great. Walking down this long corridor, and I had the steps sort of feel, felt out, I knew when it was time to turn, return, but it's going great. And then I had enough steps measured that I knew when we were gonna stop, but I got it wrong. So we're walking, like, I run into Ron's shoulder, he's already stopped and turned this way. So now I'm like, okay. I didn't know exactly which way but I was all confused now. So I kind of put my hand on, on Ron's back to find out what direction his back was. So I kind of figured it out, like, oh, okay, okay, uh. Guillermo del Toro, our director, yells, Cut! Doug Jones, can we take another one of those without you feeling up Ron's ass? <laughs> the camera was back there, looking this way, and I'm going, <laughs> And I was trying to keep my hand low so that it wouldn't be so obvious, but I didn't realize, he was wearing a long leather coat, I couldn't feel it, I, it wasn't my fault. Anyway.
anyway. So we, we got it right on the second. I do a lot of good uh, work in my take twos. So. <laughs> Question, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Um, what's your least favorite dinner food? Least favorite what? Least favorite dinner food. Like entree? Is that what you're saying? Okay, entree is what we're going to stick Oh, really I love of food. I know. Really stumped us all. Least, least favorite dinner food is anything frozen. Uh, you mean frozen and heated up? Frozen and then heated up. Oh, Correct. Yeah. Like a heat up dinner. Heat up dinner with the you know the plastic oh, like covering dinner. over the top. Call them TV dinners back in the day. Yeah. Today. Okay. TV dinners. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I like a lot of food, so I, I'm going to go ahead and pass, pass on that one. I'm not crazy about, uh, no, I like it all. <laughs> and me, it would be uh, I'm, uh, sushi. Oh, I, I don't do well with the raw, the raw texture. I love cooked fish. I could eat that all day. I uh, just had salmon last night, but if it's raw, I can't, I can't. Good, good, good question. Thank you for throwing this off here. What, what is your least favorite dinner food? Sushi. Sushi. Yeah. There you go. You're yeah. All right. All right, what's your name? Athena. Um, why did you join the Hocus Pocus movie? Why did you join the Hocus Pocus movie? Was it a choice? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was honored to be a part of it and to be picked, honestly. And so I was just extremely, extremely thankful to be a part of it and to be a part of Ken Ortega's production. So very thankful. I did because uh, I was young and I needed the money. So <laughs> no, it was an honor, like to get even an audition for something like this. Uh, the process was. It took a little while, like the first audition to the callback was probably two or three weeks. And then uh, when it happened, it was, uh, it was amazing. So we, we feel, I know we all feel lucky to have been a part of it because we're still talking about it and we're sharing it with you guys. So thank you. Yeah. And I, I think uh, for, for me, you know, of course, when we're young actors, uh, uh, you get a job, you take the job because it pays, right? That, so that's reason number one, but I was uh, faced with a character that was a zombie before zombies were cool, uh, and the only zombies I'd ever seen on film before were scary and like brain-eating zombies. Here was one that was goofy and funny and just wanted to go back to sleep, right? That, that, was a, that, that hooked me. And the other thing that hooked me was, did I mention Bette Midler was in this movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We had our reasons. Good question, thank you. All oh, right, step on up here, bud. I'll get out of your way. There you go, buddy, you're good. All right, what's your name? Zach. Uh, this question is more for you, Doug. Um, I understand that the makeup process is very brutal. You end up in some very tight new costumes and prosthetics, and you've mentioned the long hours. My question is, what do you find helps you get through that process? Uh, being a very boring person helps me a lot. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. I, I, most people in the room would want to know, like, oh, I have to be doing something all the time, so how can you sit still and do nothing for hours at a time? And I'm like, I get to sit still and do nothing for hours at a time? Just sign me up. So that's, uh, I'm the right personality type for it. Uh, I blank out and stare at walls really easily, and I, I'm, I'm happy with my own thoughts. But also, the banter that goes back and forth with makeup artists. The Creature Effects makeup artists are the most zany, creative, dark-humored people I've ever met, and I love them dearly. Yeah. So we get along so well. We also will play lots of music. Uh, I might request a lot of Whitney Houston. You know, she was, she was the queen of the day. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> I also love, if they have a, a laptop with some YouTube on it, let's watch some talking cat videos. Right? Right? Yeah, it always passes the time. Thank you so much.
Got some big names. Come on up. What is your name? Rachel. What is your favorite cookie? Oh, favorite cookie? Favorite cookie? Oh. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip cookie. Uh, chocolate chip peanut butter involved. That's fine too. <laughs> While she's thinking, um, I actually, they look like chocolate chip cookies and you'll be deceived by them, but they're the oatmeal raisin. Come on now. Come on now. Especially when they're warm and the raisins are still plump. Come on. Right? This is a tough one for me. I'm trying to think of the name and you guys can help me. It's the cookie that um, is in a, long, in, in a circular long shape. It has chocolate in the middle. Milano. Milano. Yes. Milano. Pepperidge Farm Milano. Yes. Yes. So good. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. What's your name? Um, so, not risk of this for Doug. Sorry. Um, nobody's mentioned your experience with Pan's Lab, and that is one of my personal favorite movies. I'm wondering. How difficult, not only was it to see with the film man, but also as the fawn and walking around as him. Right. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth was another film, another film in my life. It's right up there with The Shape of Water as like happy, satisfying, artistic memories for me. And both of those movies ended up at the Oscars with multiple nominations, right? So I, I picked the good ones. <laughs> but uh, with Pan's Labyrinth, uh, the, uh, the difficulty factor was the bar was really high because uh, not only did, uh, did I have a five hour makeup application and, and suit uh, before the Fawn character and the Pale Man was six hours a day, uh, he was more glued on to me and the, the Fawn had some suit where you slide and zip up and glue on other pieces. But the Fawn also had mechanics built into the head. So the eyebrows, the eyelids, and the, the ear flapping was all puppeteered and, and mechanized. So I had motors in my head going the entire time I was on camera. So if I'm having dialogue back and forth with Ivana Becerra, who was 11 years old at the time, I'm very soft-spoken. I'm like, you know, I could I, over this. So I had to kind of like get the pacing of the scene down so I knew when it was my turn again, you know. Uh, <clears throat> on top of that, the entire thing was in Spanish, a language that he doesn't know how to speak. So I learned the language of the film, and it took, uh, so I was just terrified I was gonna ruin this movie. Memorizing dialogue and, and putting paragraphs of, of, of exposition dialogue. It was very important for me to tell her who she was, where she came from, what, how she needs to get back there, save the world, save the underworld, all in Spanish, right? So that, so physically, very demanding, mentally, very demanding, and it took a toll. But in the end, it's like, oh, you know, when you watch a, a piece of art like that, it's immortalized and it's going to be on the shelf forever and ever. It's like, okay, that's why you make the sacrifice at the time. Yeah. But great makeup job on you, by the way. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Right, what's your name? My name is Liz, and I have a question for all three of you. Um, with all the uh, film and commercials and everything that y'all have done, who is your favorite actor or actress to have ever worked with? Doug, I think I know who this is. <laughs> Did you hear Freaking Matt Miller is in the movie? Yeah. Um, you, man, are you there? I can give you Matt some Miller. time. Uh, Walking Phoenix for me was something else. Him and Reese Witherspoon, pretty cool. Um, I have a, a couple favorites uh, for different reasons. Um, uh, Brendan Fraser, uh, who's now getting a lot of uh, 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 a, lot, a lot of Oscar uh, buzz for his uh, role in the Whale. Long before that, back in 1998, I think we did a movie called The Monkey Bone. Oh, you, oh, yay! Thank you for doing that. So he goes, his character goes, falls into a coma, and he goes off to this coma fantasy land where a bunch of critters are living. I was one of them. I was the, the big white fur, blue-nosed uh, yeti. 
But anyway, off camera, to banter with him, he is he's a golden retriever. He loves playing with sticks on the beach, and that's what Hollywood is to him, and I love him for that. Yeah, but other than that, I, did I mention Bet freaking Midler? Okay, thank you. Um, what inspired, what, why did I get into this crazy yeah, like, business? Yeah, was it a certain performance? Um, yeah. Was there like a musical or a movie you watched yeah. a lot as a child? Um, what, what kind of inspired you to pursue this path? Oh, good follow-up questions. This helps. Um, always loved uh, Back to the Future. That was just one of those films for me. That, Star Wars, obviously. But... What I guess kind of like sparked my interest was when I was in fifth grade, I played, I got to play the wizard in The Wizard of Oz. And I was, you know, uh, I got to sing and I got to act and I got to sing. Once I was a man who worked in the circus and I lived in Omaha, Omaha. And um, I just remember that feeling when people clapping and they thought I was funny and I was like, oh, 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 I think I've discovered something here. So it was a little bit of attention that I wasn't used to getting and uh, here I am still, still looking for it. So, um, wow, that's a, I haven't gotten that question before. <laughs> I really love it. Um, I was actually around three years old, and I don't know if you guys remember um, the movie. It was a show called Quantum Leap. Yeah. So I started watching that show with my dad, and after I watched that show, I told my dad, I said, I want to be an actress. And he said, Huh? He said, What are you talking about? I said, I want to do that. And I pointed to the TV, <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. And then he just continued watching the television. <laughs> but I just always knew at a young age, it was, I can't even pick a particular show besides that show, but I just knew, at, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. I really have no other explanation than that. <laughs> Well, I'm going to bring in elements of their answers as well, but, uh, but growing up in Indiana, uh, much like Missouri... No oh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you Midwesterners are my people, by the way. Thank you for, for being here today. Uh, but uh, being a very tall, skinny, goofy, long, skinny-necked uh, boy, who uh, was very not coordinated, so I couldn't really play basketball. And it's a basketball state, so I'm like, oh, God. I was made fun of a lot. So I had to develop a sense of humor to overcome and control and when and why they were laughing at me, right? And what inspired that sense of humor was watching Jerry Lewis movies, watching Danny Kaye movies, watching I Love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke, Gomer Pyle, Gilligan's Island, right? The Mary Tyler Moore Show, The Carol Burnett Show. Oh my gosh, right? So I'm seeing goofy, funny people that Don Knox on Mayberry. All right, but come on now. He was my hero, so I found solace and escape in watching them, and like, uh, like, and I, and again, just like, <laughs> in the meantime, The Wizard of Oz also was an annual watch for me, uh, and um, the, the idea of, of going off to a fantasy world, and singing, and dance, having musical numbers, and everything works out okay in the end, uh, that's a life I wanted, so that, I found that in film and television, yeah. Hi, what's your name? I'm Christine. Just wanted to say thank you for coming to Choose Kiva. Woo! But uh, I love you guys, the Focus Focus. Uh, my question's for you, Doug, with the moths. I read that they were real. Is that true? In Hocus Pocus, at the end, I went through the most of the movie with my mouth sewn shut, going, <laughs> and at the end of the, near the end of the film, I get a knife from a little uh, Max when I'm wrestling with him, and I cut my mouth open cough out, yes, real dust and real moths from my real mouth. This is before, thank you. <laughs> this is before CG is what it is now. 
I mean, that was back in 1992, 93, we were filming. So, uh, so what they, but it wasn't just moths in my, my mouth, because if moths get even a little bit moist, like we love that word, don't mean moist, uh, uh, they don't fly. They have to be really super dry. So to protect them from the moisture in my mouth, we had to put retainers in there with, with a latex sheet to keep them off of my wet tongue. And, and that, I was glad to have a barrier between them and me anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and there was also like a little cup in the, on the top of this retainer that had the uh, purified dust in it. So upon opening my mouth, I'm like, oh, oh, that flew out first, and then these moths came fl fluttering out. Uh, but I tell my story. It went, it went wrong on the first take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the last thing that they would get the cameras rolling, sound rolling, everything going, and the last thing was to get those moths into my mouth and then tack glue my my stitches back together again, right? Because they were already pre-cut, so they would go and they'd pop right in the right place, and I could cough these things out. Well, everything's rolling, cameras rolling, sounds rolling. The, the, the moth trainer, he was a moth trainer. I, I, I'm not kidding. He came with like cages and nets and tweezers. So he would get them by the wings and kind of go into my mouth. So he's doing that. They clamp down my stitches and we're about to set and go and a light explodes. Ruining, so we can't film this take. And I'm like, we have to go, right? So while they're fixing the lights, I can feel the water table going because you know you've got an intruder in your mouth and your saliva glands are like you know process process so I'm like oh this is this isn't gonna be pretty well they uh, uh, so they get there, everything the lights fixed the camera's still rolling and this mud comes out of my mouth the, the dust and the and this moth is kind of going. On the stream, and so they weren't—they didn't flutter and fly. But take two went really well, and that's what you saw in the movie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's try to get through as many as we can here. So we're going to lightning round this thing. Quick questions, quick answers. Here we go. All right, uh, Larry, did you and Tobias just like hit it off and like, just become friends over the? No, it took some time for us to get to the uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's really—it just was the chemistry was there. And it still is. You guys will catch him one of these times. And, uh, usually we just fight during these panels, so it's a lot of fun. But yeah, the chemistry was, and it's, you know, when you meet people and like anybody, there's a special love and bond. And we've all been lucky enough to have that. It feels like we're kind of back on that movie even now. It's nostalgic. So yeah, good question. Yeah, he's, he's great. I mean, I'm, I'm just sorry he couldn't be here today because we love him. Good question. All right, step on up. Hi, my question is for all of you guys. Um, when you were filming Hocus Pocus, did you ever think that this movie's not going to make it, it's going to be a big flop, or did you really think that it was going to be as popular as it is today? That's a yes and no. Uh, while we were filming it, we thought we have a hit on our hands, right? It's, we're, I'm going to be on lunch boxes. You know, this is how it's going to go. And then the movie came out in theaters and did not do so well, and it went away. And we're like, oh, well, I guess it was a flop. Uh, but then, here we are 30 years later, and this is the 30th year anniversary this year, by the way. Uh, and here we are celebrating it to this day, and it's more popular than, than it's ever been. And Hocus Pocus, by the way, Hocus Pocus 2, because of all of you, was in its first week on Disney+. Plus. It was the number one streaming movie of all time. So thank you so much for that. Good question. All right, two more. Um, hello. Uh, if you were not in this career, what would you be? Fishmonger. <laughs> Cooked fish. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of other life skills. <laughs> I, I, I think I would... Uh, Maybe like uh, life insurance salesman. Uh, that's what my dad did, and he always kind of wanted to get me into the financial planning. But I'm not like a, I don't like numbers and things. Uh, so that's probably what I'd be doing. But I'm glad I got to do something fun. 
I always wanted to get into law. <laughs> yeah, that's a lawyer. Do it. That's okay. And that's it, okay. And me, uh, 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 probably one of, one of two things. Uh, something, about, something about the healing arts, like extending your hand to help another person. So my brother is a psychologist, and he told me many times, he was a good psychologist, and I was like, well, I had an interest in that when I was a kid, yes. I also had an interest in nursing. I, I might, and I might have actually been a nurse today if it wasn't for acting. Yeah, but thank you. Question. All right, last question of the day. Hi, my name is Matt. Uh, what souvenirs do you guys take from sets? Yeah. Souvenirs from sets. You know, I, 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 I've kept a couple of things, but not like from the cool sets. I didn't think about it, you know? I mean, I wish I would have grabbed something on everything now, but um, mostly just the memories. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't think of anything specific. I guess I, I've got like our, the chair, you know, the actor that says the, 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 our name on the back of the chair and Hocus Pocus. So I've got, I've got most of those things from our, those movies. Um, I have a lot of movies still, somehow, so I don't know how my mom got hold of those, but I have a scrapbook which th that she made, and I started turning the pages, and I go, where did you get these movies still? She goes, I have my ways. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wow, so yeah. And for, for me, over the years, uh, if I, uh, I, I don't steal any props. But uh, I do like to take a piece of my makeups home. So I have, I had, I had in past tense a full Billy Butcherson skin from the first movie after it came off of me. So it was screen worn. But I gave to Planet Hollywood. What was wrong with me? I had no idea what it'd be worth one day. But uh, anyway, so Planet Hollywood has on display somewhere in Minneapolis. I think. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, but I've got a Silver Surfer. I've got a Saru. I've got uh, an Abe Sapien at home. So those are my, my treasures. Springfield, Missouri, have you had a good time today? Yeah. Let's give a big round of applause one more time. Amanda Shepard, Doug Jones, Larry Bagby. Yeah. Before you folks leave, we have a request of you. We would like to get a photo with all of you for the convention social media pages so you can tag yourself, have proof that you are here, use it as a doctor's note to get out of work, whatever the case might be. 